stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang them, the bombs bursting in. The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. And it looks like Amy Winston is trying to make some noise here. But... All right, Reinhardt back on point, gets his ult, knocks him down. Here we go. He's here by Shadow of Four. What a triple kill. And they keep it going. Oh, well, well. All left is our healer and our tank. Yep. Which, to their credit, doing a pretty good job of holding off this onslaught. Woohoo! Oh, got the ball. Nice. All right. He's oh, on to the payload for there. overtime. Here we go, folks. Can he maintain for a tank to get through? And he is able to. He's gonna have to Here we go, overtime. Oh. They got to push through. Oh. Got to get rid of the defenders quick enough. Raptor Claw really going nuts here with the triple kill. Not bad. Get some, D.Va. Oh, and Shadow with the kill. All right. Here we go. Come on, guys. Gotta get that. That tracer is giving him so much trouble. The tracer's tricky. That teleport ability lets her stay on point for a while. Overtime is gone. Good job, guys. and welcome in thank you for being with us here for this evening we've got a big overwatch game against Leonora Rhine so uh, we're going to be bringing you the action here in just a second I'm head coach Caleb Cockwit I'm Josh all right and so Josh and I'll be covering all of the action here this evening it looks like the team's getting close to getting underway so let's go ahead and meet our players so we'll go ahead and take a look inside Regitar USA high res arena and see what they're up to right now so uh, tonight we have a starting five, and we've actually had a uh, a really big boom in recruiting for Overwatch. The Overwatch team has never really been one that struggled with getting members, but we've really had a big increase in that here recently. So let's go ahead and meet our players if we can at some point. There we go. All right, so over there on the left, you'll see the captain, Trey Parker, otherwise known as Viva Caligula. Then next to him, one of our new players, Chalky. Uh, she, is that how you pronounce that one, Josh? Chalky. Chalky. Chalky, yeah. Chalky, okay. A little bit, little bit complicated, but yeah. Yeah, I'm a white boy. I don't know how to pronounce the foreign names. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Peyton Provo is the one in the middle there. And then over to the right, you have the lieutenant, and that is Ian McFarlane, or IND. And then over on the other side, we've got uh, Jesse all the way over at the left, a veteran of the team. Shadow 4, Jesse Clark. And then over to the right, a new player, uh, one of the new players we were just talking about. That's going to be good old Tom, otherwise known as Tom. So his yep. is uh, uh, pretty easy to understand. Tom Ledwell going to be sitting in for that one. So those are our starters. And before we get into some of the action, we do have a fantastic sponsor to tell you about. So. Uh, that is going to be Shane's Rib Shack, oh, yeah. and I love Shane's. I've eaten there a lot. It was funny. I was actually talking to our athletic director, Hal Wynn, mm -hmm. um, who's my boss, 
and I told him that we had brought it on chains. He's like, well, that's fantastic. As much as we eat there, like, that'll be really easy to do ads for. I was like, oh, yeah, because their stuff's so good. And he's right. Like, the athletic department, here's the thing. You know a restaurant's good when you walk into the restaurant and the clientele is all a bunch of guys that look like coaches because we know how to eat. Oh, yeah, 100%. So, <laughs> like, half the, the Faulkner Athletic Department is in there. So, uh, I go there a lot. A lot of the other coaches go there. Uh, and the reason is because the food's so good. I mean, Chains is famous for their ribs, but they've got so much more. They have barbecue sandwiches, plates, uh, burgers, loaded potato, a load of baked potatoes, wings, wraps. So even if you're like, I don't want to go to barbecue, it's all the same. Well, not at Shane's because they have all these different things that you can get. And their Brunswick stew and mac and cheese is absolutely like some of the, the best sides that you'll ever put in your mouth. And they have a lot of variety in that. And they also have several gluten-free options. Also grilled chicken and salads if you want to eat a little bit healthier. So any th anybody that you want to feed, there is an option available for them at Shane's Rib Shack. So check them out. They're just two miles down the road here on the Atlanta Highway across the street from Publix. Uh, that is Shane's Rib Shack. So, uh, oh gosh, are they already are they already in play? This isn't a warm up. I think we're actually already. They started without us, which is uh, not good. So let's go ahead and jump in. To uh, spectator should be up at this point. I'm hoping. Um, so if we can go ahead and see what's going on here, there we go. So we've got uh, Chucky as Life Weaver here, and trying to defend point it looks like they've almost taken all of point against Ooh. Lenore um, Ryan and they're in Force overtime now yep excellent for crowd control dude. there's a uh, another ult from who's playing as oh this is Viva Viva's tanking tonight gotcha. so you're seeing they're able to have been very dominant so far the other team hasn't taken any of this particular uh Oh, yeah. point. Or not choke point, just point. You can see that Viva's over here taking a, a nice um, strategy. He's going back and forth with his um, with his spear or javelin um, spin. It's really really uh, useful because you can push people right off the point whenever he needs to. Yeah, he and you can tell by, him. you can look over there and see who's getting the kills. Mm -hmm. um, you can really tell that it's uh, he's doing a good job of pushing and stage control, whereas the other guys are actually doing that. Okay, so that's round one for Faulkner. Oh, yeah. So looking good on the first stage here. Sorry about uh, not being able to bring you that action beforehand. They uh, started without us knowing, so apologize for that. Um, but it looks like they're getting ready for phase two. And the format is actually a little different this year, so I figured I'd go ahead and let the audience know. They've actually moved it to a best of five. Uh, oh, because really? of the way, yeah. So the the way that it's changed, because you have to remember, they were used to Overwatch One, mm -hmm. which had much slower gameplay. It was uh, it took a lot longer for games. Now they've decided because it's a much faster pace game that they've just moved to uh, just having five, which honestly kind of makes sense. Yeah. Uh, with the the way that the gameplay has changed, so looking forward to that. Okay, so they are heading in, and by the way, we can go ahead and uh, pull up our scoreboard if we can there we go so ooh Jockey's getting pushed into the back line that's not good no especially because that's one of the things that you'll notice uh, teams will try to do when they're trying to establish dominance over a certain point is they'll, they'll go after the supports the other team's really choking them out they're they have a uh, a May on their team, and they separated the tank from the rest of the healers. That was a really good play by them. Yeah, for sure. That's sort of May's gameplay 101 is do everything you can to keep the team divided. And once you do that, if you have the right team combination, it can be really devastating to a team. But Faulkner's still able to get on point and still able to hold it for the time being. Although it looks like they're, uh, they may not be able to do that much longer. It looks like they're kind of coming back together and regrouping. Yeah. Um, generally, you don't like to stagger, but if you have control of points, sometimes staggering is the better option. It looks like they've opted not to. They've decided to stay back and try to just have a really strong showing. Uh, I hope that they're able to regroup in an effective way because it looks like they've taken as much point um, as they did earlier. So Faulkner now behind in this round, but that can change them. Oh yeah, this is a very sw this is a very swingy game. So looks like Soldier's right got his ult. Oh yeah. So, about to Let's pop. See if he can use it. To see if he's going to pop visor here in a second. Getting a little bit of lag. 
I don't think the audience is seeing that. I think that's an internal issue. Oh, okay. Because uh, we're using the, the secondary viewer. Jesse's down. Yep. Ooh, All right, so that's a flank from, uh, from Ian right there. Yeah, Ian's coming back here with Ash trying to... Fortunately, did not pay off. That, no. is, that is sad. Ab able to stack up a little bit of damage, but not enough to make a big difference. They are getting a little bit separated, and this is not not ideal, but I think they can still come back from it if they play their cards right. They're kind of coming back together as a group. Smart play. Yeah, so what you're seeing there, too, is uh, Chiaki is switching to Moira, which is a support character she's much more comfortable with. This is her main, actually. Yeah, so she she's probably going to... Uh, she plays an evil, an evil Moira. She really does. <laughs> I think every single time I play with her, she averages like 22 kills per game. It, it's absurd. Yeah, but you're seeing... Uh, you're seeing her having to be forced a little bit more into the off uh, offensive role there where they're trying to get them to this choke point. This seems to be a choke point that they really favor is the top of the stairs there. Yeah. And it's really benefiting them because they're able to... Oh, that, that is a bash note from the other team. That is crazy. I didn't know he charged up that fast. Oh, yeah. He's, if he's getting enough damage, he can. All right, so they're looking at... M maybe it looks like trying to operate on two fronts here. It looks like they're trying to take a different direction, which is... Oh, Ideal. you're right, the whole team's rotating. But it looks like it is, yeah. Um, Junkrat got separated. This is not good. No, they really want to be able to another, make some noise here. They're choking. on point. They've got the touch. The question is, can they keep it long enough? I don't think they're going to be able to. Oh. The other team's at 99. Oh, oh, man. Unfortunately, they wasted ult there. Yeah, they... It doesn't, it doesn't carry over rounds, though. Which no. Is, which is good. Ooh. All right, so Wonder we're one. tie ball game. Faulkner... One Lenore at one. I think they're still playing really good. Oh Bo yeah. Both teams are very solid. Um, the way they were, the the opponent team was playing in last round was a very choke in and out style. Uh, they're able to take go into the enemy team, separate half the team by itself, and then they're able to kind of like pick what whatever's left off until the yeah. either ice wall goes down or. The, the other team is able to come back. I think really the question now is what do they do to counter that? Because if if that eff uh, worked as effectively as it did, you can. I mean, you better believe the team's going to try that again with a different choke point. So yeah, uh, what what do you do to counter that? Is the, the there's next not question. a whole lot you can do to counter Maze Ice Wall. Um, but one of the things that, uh, the team usually does when they get Ice Wall is they usually um, like switch over to a, a really fast, heavy hitting character to break the Ice Wall as fast as possible, like, right. a, like a Bastion or uh, maybe even a Reinhardt, so they can bust all the walls down at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, it looks like they're they're still getting kind of separated, but they're doing it. They're killing the wall fast enough. They're able to get. I think that's probably why they had uh, Ian switch to Reaper, is because he can be a wall buster. Oh, and he, Ian's flanking. Ooh, this could be big. Oh, let's see how this works. Can you get the uh, Bastion? I think you can see what I'm gonna do. Oh, he got pushed back by Lucio. Uh, that is. Mm. He had him too. He did. Now he's gonna try to take out the May. It looks like. Ah, uh, uh, but he gets taken out. Yeah, unfortunate. All right, so Life Weaver gonna get some some distance, gonna get some height here. It's a very, very good way to get out of there. Very smart on Chiaki's part. Oh, this is Tom. Oh, it's Tom. You're right. Yeah, this is this is. They Tom. switched up so, the okay. so you see what Tom's doing there. He's just waiting for his team. Not gonna uh, make a big push or anything. Just gonna kind of wait to where they can regroup and make a really strong showing here. Yeah. All right, so again, they're going to try to stall them out at this choke point. Uh, Viva trying to make some noise here, push his team through and lead them on to the point. He's got ult. Is he going to use it here? That's the question. If that were Viva in this situation, I would push in really far in and then use ult. I think but so. It just didn't pay off. Baptiste used his ult, and it kind of melted Orisa, unfortunately. Yeah, but at least he didn't waste it. Like, he'll yeah. come back with it. So, do you change tanks here, you think? I don't know. Um, I do know, for the most part, that a good switch right now is kind of hard to do, because right now, everyone, almost everyone has their ults. I would, personally, I probably wouldn't switch, because they could just ult dump and then take point. Um, but right now, it looks like they, they've got a, a solid foothold right here. Yeah, I think there, so. There's 
the ult right there that we were waiting for. Yep. Ooh. And Lucio on the other, other team pops his ult. Yeah, Viva's able to take one out, but... They um, still got their, their... Oh! Wait! Oh, no. Okay, Tom's in trouble. Yep. Unfortunately, that, that's that probably one. that round, I think. Yeah. I mean, they'd have to get somebody to touch here, which... I'm they might. Sure. Nope. It's going to be close. Nope. It's not a good um, touch point. That was... Oh, they almost had it, too. Yep. They were you can see the echo coming over the top. All right. So, that is going to be a loss of round one, then. Um, and that means that we're going to... Oh, Viva did get play of the game. Let's go ahead and look at that. Well, that's oh, a, that's man. A very Beautiful. Good use. Yeah, very good use. Yeah. Unfortunately, they weren't, they weren't able to win that uh, round, but hopefully they can regroup and figure out a way to get around that barricade because they were really struggling with those two choke points, and hopefully they can figure out a way to uh, counteract that in the next round. So that's going to leave us with an opening score of uh, Lenore Ryan with one round. So they've still got plenty of time. This oh, is yeah. the best of five. They can definitely mount a comeback here. Yeah. I think Ian can definitely figure out a strategy. He, Ian's probably one of the better strategists on our team, I think. And he, he's really, usually really good at counterpicking. He's been teaching most of the team how to counterpick a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I have a good feeling that he's going to find a, a better strategy for this next round. I think so, and you'll notice, too, that when they, they countered, even though they didn't wind up winning that round, one of the things that you will notice is they didn't have the same issues that they did in round yeah. two in the, in the second round. Um, they were able to actually get around May's uh, wall. They were able to get a couple of flanks in. They weren't uh, typically that successful, but the fact is they were able to get them in where they were completely stalled out in the second one. Yes. So uh, they are improving, and I could see this being a situation to where they just find out that combination of how this team operates to be able to uh, go on to victory. So... There, we're we're between rounds now. We'll be back to the action as soon as they're able to pick for a round two. So uh, going into this one round down, um, it is not that uncommon for a team to be able to just take over in the second round, have a good showing, and then Faulkner's back in it again. So hopefully that's what we can do. And I, generally speaking, you're on the team, so you could tell me probably more about this than than they could. What? format would you say Faulkner is the most comfortable with? Is it pu is it push bot? Is it uh, car uh, escort cargo? Like, what what do they... We usually do really good on um, usually escort cargo. Yeah, um, I've noticed that in practice y'all seem to do the best at payloads. Yeah. Uh, personally, when, I, when I'm a really good attacking character, I, I'm main soldier 76, mm -hmm. and when you when you have a, a, a push map, or push bot, whatever, push bot, Payload. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> whenever you have a payload, there's so many game pushing, modes. Whenever, whenever you have a payload that you're pushing, you kind of need to, like, kind of stay behind it and on top of it. And as sure. as a soldier 76 man, it's kind of my job to like stay with the point most of the time, and to like kind of escort it most of the time and keep people off of it at the same time. And when you're attacking, it's really easy. But when you're defending, it's a lot harder for soldier 76. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the team has is really good against um, defending and attacking on payload. So, okay. All right. So it looks like we're just getting the teams assembled and we're going to get back into this here in just a second. Uh, they've already got their characters picked. It looks like they're going to go with, um, they're going to hang on to Life Weaver. They've also got Echo, uh, Zarya, and Bastion. Lucio. They have a Bastion in there. Oh, Bastion as well. Yeah. He's, he's the one screen I don't have actually right now. <laughs> This is a, a very interesting team, actually. You're able to bubble Bastion with, with Zarya and then move forward kind of a lot more in a group. As I understand it, Bastion has become actually way more viable in the meta since his recent oh, yeah. buff than he was earlier because there was a time where you almost never saw Bastion. Yeah. I, I played Bastion Overwatch when he was so much fun, but the team would hate you every single time you played. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even when he wasn't that great, I still didn't like playing against Sebastian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. You got Tom over here playing Lucio again. He plays a nasty Lucio. Oh, for sure. He does the music. <laughs> yes, he does indeed. All right, so we're going to see 
Shadow come in here and try to make some noise, kind of get around to the side. Oh, and pops oh. out the Gatling gun. He, if you don't notice this, he's actually bubbled by Zarya right now. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. That's why he's out in Good the open catch. right now. Yeah, I was wondering about that myself. Most of the time, a Bastion wouldn't just go out in the open like that, but when he's got a Zarya bubble, he's like, it's, it's really, really like, impossible to do anything to him, honestly. Yeah, and recently they've made some changes to the Zarya bubble to where the Zarya bubble is actually much more strong when you use it. Oh, there's a kill from yourself. Jesse. Oh, nice. I didn't even catch that. Taking out the May is big right now, too. He's got ult. And he pops ult. Gonna get it right on point. There you go. And he gets, I think he, he does get the Lucio on the opponent team. Yep. All right, Faulkner with four kills now. Oh, this is just so sad, watching Lucio bully the tank. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, I'm weeping internally. <laughs> you can't tell. Tom is one of the scariest Lucio players I've ever seen. He he's got the uh, the mobility on Lucio kind of figured out to a certain point. It's done to a science. It is scary. I watched him t pick apart teams by himself. It is crazy. Which is impressive, really, with Lucio, but any support role to oh, be yeah. able to do that. Uh, and it looks like they've got payload up here. Yep. And They're currently moving it forward. It's a little bit further away from the the point that I thought at first, but they're they're pushing it quite nicely. Oh yeah, I mean, look, we've still got a minute or four and a half minutes, and oh, yeah. already close to halfway to checkpoint. Yeah, I you can see the team's a lot better on push points. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. Our uh, come on, Zarya. Our Bastion went down. That's not good. That does take out a significant amount of our firepower. They are getting sure. pushed Oh, back. yeah. They're in, they're in any regroup now at this point. You know, the Zarya, I think, did a really good job. Zarya-Bastion combo, but once Bastion was gone, it seemed like Zarya became significantly less effective as well. And here you go. You see Lucio over here. He's, he's kind of... He looks like he's about to go crazy. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> We can we can hear them talking in the yeah. uh, arena. That's why the sudden laughter. Who was it? That just it was Ian. That oh, that died. was definitely Ian. Yeah. I don't know how he died though. All right, so Zarya you gonna bubble. We have Bastion holding corner. This is a very smart play from Bastion. Here we go. Oh no, he got frozen. Oh no! This isn't good. Get out of there, Ian. He's wait, right now. It's ult time. Oh, and Life Weaver's ult. He That's gonna not be big. To Bastion's got his ult right now. I feel like that was a, that was the moment he could use right there. I think he could get in the entire team, but he I'm, chose not to. Yeah, I'm wondering why. Maybe there was a decision made there. He, they, they did have Lucio ult on the opponent team, but I don't think it had enough HP to to. Oh, and down. they get Requiem. Nice. Oh, yeah. They, I think that they, they've almost taken out the entire team. It's They pretty much got this point at this point. Yeah, they do. Um, the question is, like, how long are they going to be able to hold it and keep that payload moving? If we, you have Echo over here on the bridge kind of scouting, telling you what the opponents are. It's a really smart play. Yeah, kind of Baptiste being Baptiste uses his ult here. Using Echo as your eye in the sky is a smart move for sure. Jockey's just pocket healing. This is great. On her Love it. Kaizen goes down. Leg goes down. Requiem goes down. Wow. Come you, on, guys. You can't even see the, the HP bars on our characters or on our players even moving because Jockey's just pocket healing. It's, it is insane how good she is at keeping everyone covered. It's nice. Oh, yeah. You, you know, one of the most important things for a support character, too, is you have to have really good eyes. Like, the situational awareness you need to be good at that job is yeah. crucial, and Espe she has Especially it. when you have an Echo on your team, because Echoes are so hard to keep track of. Right, because they're zipping around all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah. All right, Ooh. so now they've got to go under this uh, overpass here. That was a good shot from Ian. 
pushed him back, kind of gave him a little scared, I think. You know, it's funny because I'm not even used to seeing Ian play Echo very much oh. at all, but he's really doing well here. I think he's started picking up Echo a lot more. He plays a really good Echo. And gets Kaizen. Most of the time I do see him playing Mei, but right there. Mm, beautiful. You got Lucio going crazy on the top over here. He's just bullying. He's just picking apart the opponent team. Oh, man. Yeah. Really good heal there, by the way, on Shadow. And look, see, they, they pop up the May Ice Wall, and it barely even affects them. Yeah. It's almost there. Here they go. Oh. There goes their, t their Bastion. Yep. This would probably be the point where you would hit ult. Yep, there it is. Man, they are just tearing through their lines. Shockey's getting bullied over here. Yeah, they they've oh, discovered. she's fine. They've discovered though that she's the target they need to hit. It couldn't. It doesn't even matter at this point. I don't think so either. Oh man. Man, they're so close. Oh, to the unfortunately, end. Ian does go down. All right, come on, guys. You got this. All right, now they're going to try to take out this. Oh no, they've been, they've been anteed. They're getting pushed back. Yeah. They lost the end, and I think after that it kind of blew up. It snowballed. Yeah. Yeah. Zari is still here trying to... I think Zari can pull it back, but... You think so? Uh, nope. I thought it was... I, th <laughs> I mean, still, they're so close to, pay, to, the, to the end. I think that they can... Uh, they've got 53 seconds. So they can definitely make along a stand with, here. Along with a few ults, I believe. I know that Bastion has his. Ian's almost got his. Ah, oh, unfortunately, Ian does go down off of a pick. Yeah, not only does he go down there, but he also goes down like right as he's knocking on the door of having his ult. So that is a big, big problem. Yeah, unfortunate. We do have a Eva. They switched out. Um, I actually see D.Va as being a, a better option here, a yeah, little bit more I agree. global, uh, and when you're wanting to move to point quickly, it's Especially a good sense. counter for Bastion because it just eats his entire um, bullets that he shoots when he's in tank form. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to do anything though, they're, they're under 5 seconds, they may want to move it up just a little bit, but... As I long as they're on point, I think they, they, uh, they're okay. Well, if, if they, yeah, the only thing is they, they want to move it all the way, but I don't think... Oh, they get picks! The Lucio's down, nice. their tank's down. Bastion takes down Kaizen. And Rez. This Fine. is it. K That's it. That is it. Oh, my goodness. Come on, what guys. A and we have the tank going in to hold them back. There they are. That was a beautiful play. Well Man. executed. Gorgeous. Just clutch play at the end there for Faulkner. Oh, yeah. The Eagles taking down the Bears. The, oh, the match is not over yet, though. No, no, no. We do still have the other side of that to play. So that was a that was a great play. I think that kind of uplifted them a little bit. They're gonna play really good this next. Oh, for bit. sure. That was that was crucial for Team Morale. Oh, yeah. um, they did really really well at the end there, but it wasn't just the end. You remember that we were feeling a little disheartened there at the end before they made yeah. that big play, but it was only because they did so well in the opening and got the payload so far that uh, everything had been kind of rolling smoothly, and then they started getting some hiccups and. It sort of snowballed from there, but way to go on them for in the last really 30 seconds just bringing everything together and being able to get on payload. That was really impressive. Not sure who's playing tank right now, but whoever was playing oh, Diva. tank. Viva? Viva's playing tank. His swap to Diva at the very last minute, I kind of questioned it at first, but at the very end, I was like, man, that was a really good decision because he was able to counter not only the Bastion, mm -hmm. but also take a few of the kills at the same time. It was really nicely well executed. Yeah, and I think that because they weren't expecting it, it really threw them for a loop as well. Yeah. So they're getting their defenses ready. This is going to be a... It looks like Ian's going to try and place a wall with May right at the very beginning of the match. That's what it seems that he's setting up for. Maybe not. So he's opting not to do that. Oh, but that's also a good idea right there. Oh, and we're getting a little bit of action between Orissa and walls off the opponents here. Yep. 
so that they can push back on this point. We just got May like taking everybody right here. Yep. And there's the wall again. That might have saved him right here. Oh. Reaper gets a kill on Jesse though. Still, without their tank, I think it's going to be a little they bit easier. They have both their healers still. It's, I think it's going great. I mean, so far. They're coming back up over the top, though. Oh, no. I think there was a missed wall placement there. Yeah. Looks to be that that was the issue. Their tank is doing... Viva's doing really good. He pops all here. Yep. Thomas Baptiste, which we've not seen in this game so oh. far. Oh. Tom goes down. Yeah. Oh, and, and Chalky goes down, too. Man, without any supports, they're... They're in real trouble. Yeah. Shocky plays a, a pretty aggressive style of healer, which is kind of fun to watch. It actually. is really fun to watch, but at the same time, it just it really confuses me because I never thought of a healer could be played in a, in that kind of way, you know? Oh yeah, she she's definitely a healer, but a healer that does not mind getting her hands dirty and jumping in and helping the offense. Yes. You see that Ian switches over to Sombra. Yep. A very interesting idea. Yeah, honestly, I think it's because he's he's wanting to get a flank in. Not only that, I think he wants to try and cancel out something that the Reaper's doing, maybe. Oh, I can see that, yeah. I didn't and you think have, about that. you have ult ready from, from Jesse. Yeah, having Bastion up uh, with this level of high ground um, and it getting is. the ult off, like, that's, that's a really good way to handle this. There he goes. Gonna go for their Bastion. Wise decision, honestly. Yep. So they're kind of... The opponent team's a little staggered right now. And it's, a little bit. And it's kind of playing into the hands of, of Viva right now, honestly, because when, when you have a staggered team and you're and you're uh, playing as a tank, you're able to pick apart the enemy right? quite literally in seconds. Well, and that's the thing. Uh, if we can keep them sort of divided and conquer... Oh, Sombra's in the background. He's going to try to take a pick on their, on their healer. Nope, oh. isn't able to get it. But still... Got close though. Oh, and but he he still they still got the kill confirmed though. You know, that's the thing too. Sometimes you don't even necessarily have to get the kill. The fact that you're a Sombra and you distract them from doing what they're doing. It really especially when you're team, wanting yes. to buy time, like that that can be big. There it is. There we go. Take that bastion out. There goes the bat oh wait, no, he's nope, still alive. Still alive. Oh my gosh. He was living on a prayer right there. Oh yeah. Credit to him for being able to stay alive in a very difficult situation. Looks like Faulkner, Team Faulkner is trying to come back to uh, become a little bit less staggered. Yeah, Jesse kind of waiting for his teammates to make a move. You can see that they're coming from the other side there. And now he's going to be on this side creating pressure. Look at there. Sombra hack. Nice. He's also got ult, which is really scary. All right, Bastion goes down. Nasty. Now get that Reaper. Their, their tank spell will lose. There it is. All right, they get Junker Queen. There's the ult from Ian. They get Rez. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Ian Sombra's just going, going crazy. crazy. Let's go, man. <laughs> man, what a play by the Eagles. You can see that he popped ult right there, and that was to get Re not only Reaper out of out of his Wraith form, but to, to weaken the other opponent that was right next to him. And it was a really valuable ult use right there, because holding on to ults is not a really good thing in this game. Um, but him using it right there gives him enough time to get it back before the final uh, push point, you know? Oh, yeah. Very smart play by you. Here he is again. Uh, trying to get that Bastion. If he can make them afraid to even pick Bastion, like, that will be huge for their game. Oh, yeah. And there's a Lucio ult from Tom. Yep. Oh, oh Chalky gets eliminated. I, take, I think they're going to take the point right yeah, here. Yeah, they're probably going to get point at this. Wait, they got D.Va here. Wait, hang on. Have I spoken too soon? We may have. Commentator's curse is working in our favor. Oh, unfortunately, it doesn't go off the point. But someone's still on it. Are we going to uh, get Bastion ult right here? Nope. Unfortunate. Wow. That would have been an awesome play right there. It really would have been. It. But they, they do get the extra time, and they're on point. 
uh, still, they have significantly less time than Faulkner had here. Oh, yeah. So if they can get a stop here, that's going to be big. Remember, the only thing you have to do to, to win against uh, them in this situation is just outlast them. Right, because you already you already took uh, payload all the way to the destination in the last round, so all you've mm -hmm. got to do is stop them from doing that here, and you win. Yes. It looks like Bastion's also got ult again, too. This could be a really nice play at the very end. Or he could use it now and save it, uh, save a new, another one for another, the end. I mean, it was it's very... I could see either one being a viable strategy, honestly. Honestly, right now would be a I great I tell you what, though, they are moving payload quickly, so Faulkner needs to pick yep. up the pace. There's only one person on the payload right now, and it's a Lucio. And there goes the Lucio. Nope. Oh, they switched to Junkrat. Yeah, Ooh. Ian is Junkrat. That's interesting. Ooh, I love Junkrat. He's so much fun. He, he can get um, hits when you're not even looking at him because the, his, his uh, grenades can bounce off corners. Right, they've got that uh, recoil or um, ricochet oh, effect. Oh, yeah. They also have a really good drop off, so you can hit people from behind a wall. It's it's so crazy. He does get a little bit low here, which is unfortunate. They're trying to take tank here. Got bro, this, this <laughs> Lucio, I I'm not even kidding, is the most crazy thing I've seen in a long time. I love watching Tom play. Yeah, one of the things that's really good about him is he'll slip behind the lines and then just like sort of. Uh, pester, not even necessarily go for the kill, but pester the back lines, and it, it really freaks people out. But the best part about Thomas playing is he knows when to come back to the team and heal, mm -hmm. which is the best thing that you can like if you like know for Lucio. Unfortunately, it looks like they're getting really close to this point. Yeah, they're gonna have to make a big, big stop here, which I've seen Faulkner do it before, but it's gonna be a tall order. Wait, wait, Causes... Jockey's a little bit low right here. Yeah, unfortunately, oh. we lost Jesse, and after that, it was it was tough. They're still on point. Come on, guys. Lucio on Hang point. Hang in there. If they get Lucio back on the point, it's going to be nuts. Oh, yeah. Zarya? Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Wait. The heat. Lucio cast ult. Did he? He did. I missed it. And you got Bastion back on the point, and he's going to try to pick off some of the... Oh, my goodness. It's, ah. good. it's down to the wire right now. Wow. This is anyone's game. Come on. Take out that re Reaper. Get him. I don't think it's going to happen, though, unfortunately. Uh. Wait, we got Orisa back on point. Oh man, what I wouldn't have given for an Orisa ult right there. It would have been awesome. Yeah, that's going to be it. They so, still have sudden death though. With just a minute left, uh, they're able to tie it up. Unfortunate, but honestly, they did really good that round. Yeah, I know they wound up ultimately not winning it, but there were some really smart decisions made there. And love to see them be able to come back from this and... Uh, be able to make a big push to win round two, then we're back in the game. Yeah, I, I think that they can, if they do a really good um, push right here, mm -hmm. as fast as they did in the first round, it's not faster. I think we have this in the, in the bag, to be honest with you. I think so, but we'll see. Hmm. I don't know. What do, if if you're them, what do you do here? Like, what do you what do you do in the change up for the sudden death? Honestly. Nothing. They've been doing really good. So you just kind of stay the course. Yeah. Stick with what they're going. Well, most of the things that have been like kind of messing up the our team right now is just technical errors. Yeah. Just them kind of making small mistakes that kind of cost them in the long run. It's not a big problem, but when you when you make them like enough times, it does kind of add up. Um, it's like when you die, like as right. a DPS um character, your team's fine, but you're not killing the other team. Right. It does, it does limit you a little bit. Well, one thing that I've noticed, and, and this may be an issue as well, uh, Faulkner's, in every round that we've seen, whether they won or lost, their opening game was excellent. Their ending game was excellent. It's the middle of the game that has been somewhat hit or miss. Yeah. And so, like, if they could just tighten up the screws on the middle of the game, I think that they'd be doing a lot better because uh, so far they've had very, very strong s stands to open and close each match. And just getting that middle and getting that consistency that's going to be big for them. Well, honestly, sometimes when you just kind of throw it at the, in the middle of the game, it's not even your fault. It's just a sense of fatigue. Right. And it really gets us um, at, when we're playing on like a, a very high level. Um, it's not that we're like tired. It's the fact that we've, we just like don't know what to do anymore. It does happen, especially to me a lot, but I think once you get into a rhythm, like like right now, the Lucio is kind of in a rhythm, 
quite the uh, <laughs> Nice pun there. You, <laughs> He's got you, the uh, jokes, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when you get into a rhythm, you, you kind of you're able to do a lot more, a lot more um, consistently, and that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. Well, uh, Faulkner struggling a little bit to keep this point. Um, they're in overtime right now, so the question is, can they take these guys They've out? Got a is that a Moira Faulkner. ult I just saw? I do not know. I kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye, so I wasn't 100% sure. All right, so oh. here we go with Tom. Tom went ult. Yep. We have we have a ball now. We have a ball? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Viva. Unfortunately, he was not able to stay on point, which is a little bit saddening. But I think if we keep them off point, it's just a, it's just a draw. I'm not sure. Is who, that the case? Yeah. If if they get on, if they don't, if they cannot get on point next on this next time. It's a it's an automatic draw. I'm so not this sure. is similar to college football overtime, if I'm not mistaken. Like you basically go till someone wins, wins a round in sudden death. So uh, that'll be interesting. I got to be honest, I was kind of surprised to see uh, Viva come out with ball. I know that he loves playing ball, but it seemed like a weird pick. It's, for it's a, more of a, a last point, a last minute opportunity. Uh huh. So like if so, if your team kind of finishes them up, but they kind of lose. And you have one more person to kill on point. You just go in with ball and like finish up house. I see. It's it's not really a a very smart decision, but it's a very it's a very viable decision. As in, you can you can really um benefit from it. It's a risky move. In other words, it's it's high risk high reward is what yeah. you're saying. And when you're trying to hit point, honestly, the best characters for like touching point at the very last minute is ball and diva. Those are the best. I can two. see that. Yeah. And if not those two, Winston. So Faulkner on defense here. Uh, looks like they're going to try to make a stand here at this choke point, setting up everything for what they're going to need to win this one. So let's see if they can actually pull this off. I mean, you got a minute, and I think they can. I love playing Soldier 76 on this map. This the ledge right here on the top. It's the perfect advantage point for every single shot. And I'm kind of surprised they haven't taken it. But that it, it, it's a, it's a preference sometimes. Okay, you, so you do get mm. so what could have been a little bit of miscommunication there? They they throw up wall and then Bastion's firing at wall. We lose. We lost our Bastion. Mm. Yeah. Some of those miscommunication mistakes can really cost you. Yeah. And Tom back here playing Ana. And gets. Not sure about that decision. Yeah, I. It's not that it was a good decision. I just don't know. Yeah, they've taken point. Cool. So. That's and is really good for, for, for like kind of splitting people up, but I'm not sure about that decision. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would have gone with Ana either, but that's going to be another round for Lenore Ryan. So we've got to win the next three in a row. Uh, and, you know, this is just an indication. We've gotten play of the game both rounds that we've lost. And oh, it's yeah. just incredible to see how Faulkner Jesse's uh, doing great is playing excellent. They just aren't able to pull it all together at the tail end of the round. Yeah, a little so, unfortunate, but I think I think they're doing really good, nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing really good gameplay from them. They're just not able to, to close the deal, and that's the thing. Uh, I know it's an old coach adage, but I'm a coach, so I can use it. Uh, it's not about how you start, but how you finish. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing. They're just they're they're knocking on the door of it, and it's it's tough to see because they're playing really high level oh, yeah. Overwatch. They're just not able to seal the deal on the last the last second of the play there. Really unfortunate. Um, but yeah, we do have uh, three more games if if Faulkner can win. Uh, if but if they lose even one round after this, it's over. Yeah. So the pressure is on. Oh, for sure. And sometimes Faulkner does really well under pressure. So let's see if they are able to pull this one out. Uh, I don't know what the game form will be next time. Uh, like you I'm were saying, hoping for a pushbot. You you think they do better on pushbot? It's all I think be it would be better for them. I think it would be a mix-up. Because Pushbot is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the newer um, maps. And yeah, Pushbot was one that was introduced with Overwatch 2. Yeah. Um, and besides Flashpoint, is the newest um, uh, game mode. So right. it's kind of a no-one-knows kind of situation. I mean, our our characters and their characters probably know it, but they don't know it well enough, like, like the... Payloads are like you can know them because you've done them hundreds of thousands of times. Right, it is the newer mode, and and I understand that. Um, it looks like they're going to be picking their characters here in just a second. 
And uh, Flashpoint is actually the game mode that they're going to be going with, so we're about to see a Flashpoint battle. I love um, some Flashpoint. I'll tell you what, <laughs> uh, since it is newer, why don't you go ahead and explain to the audience how Flashpoint works. Flashpoint is a best of, what? what is it, three? Um, three. So what you basically do is you try and, and hold a point for a, it's a very short amount of time. It's a, I think it's either a minute or two. And what you try and do is just hold one point, just like you would do in regular um, defend or right. attack point. But you do it for less time, and then you would switch spots, because every single time you gain a point, it doesn't mm-hmm. stay the same. Um, and it goes to a different point of the map. It is very, very tricky, because if you kill the entire team, and then get on, and you're on the first point, they can make it, the other team can make it to the other point before right. you can, and take it. It's very, it's very unforgiving. Yeah, there's not a lot of room for error in Flashpoint. I think that's a good way to characterize yeah. it. So if the other team makes some errors, we're going to have to exploit those. There you go. We got Soldier 76. Yeah, Jesse pulling out the 76. He does play a really good Soldier. I do like Soldier with the beard. That's a, that's a good look for him. Where's he with? Beardy, beard, <laughs> beardy Soldier. Alright, so trying to work this corner here and yeah. really make some noise on point. Looks like they're going to take the first point, so they're start wow, you're right, that counter goes up really fast. It is it is very unforgiving. Yes. You've got a May on the other team kind of That May has been a annoyance. Yeah. <laughs> Basically the entire game. Yeah. They've also got Lucio, which is an interesting pick too. They've got a really interesting team set up right now yeah it's not one that you see all that often and i'm surprised that they're playing junker queen as much as they are but junker queen is very very good right now yeah i i know but it's just the fact that she's been out there so much usually you see a little bit more mix up but i guess if it's working for them don't don't fix it and you got you see here uh viva's over here rocking the D D dice on his gun that's right <laughs> let's see if he can roll a 20 here for us that would be preferable oh for sure Our Junkrat does go down to a precision kill. So does our soldier. Wow. Yeah, I think they're going to choose to fall back yeah. here a second ago. It, I mean, it's it, a really good decision to fall back and um, start heading to the next point because right now it's just more like a company losses and go to the next one. Right. Um, and with when you have uh, Junkrat Queen right now, She's really good with switching points because she has her, um, her holiter ability. Right. I'm not sure that's actually what it's called. but <laughs> I think everyone knows what you're talking about. Yeah. She, she's able to increase the movement speed and give herself extra increased HP. Um, and also increase the amount of speed of her surrounding teammates. And this might be what kind of decides who gets to the point first. Unfortunately, I think I think they're, they're choosing to go with second, which is um, it's kind of interesting. They did get... Killed first though. Mm-hmm. Ian got killed again from the May. May got a bunch of recent um, patches as of late. See, I was unaware of that. Um, May's one that has kind of always been mid tier, I would say. Oh, she's. Uh, I'm not sure about mid tier, but she's she's been a really good player for a while because you're able to use her. Yeah, her it, it's it's her environmental control that's big. Yeah. And Ch- uh, Chalky with the ult tier is able to get two three kills this is where they can take point yep this is the opportunity guys oh unfortunate oh, goodness and their other this team is really good right now jockey's kind of getting it pushed into a corner this oh is yeah good. down to 12 hp and they've not staggered us there. staggering is a very very efficient way to win a match because you're able to if you are able to keep it like even like their healers alive until like they need to die mm-hmm. it really does stagger the opponent team and that's kind of what they did i think is that they just waited in, until the entire team was dead and then they killed the healers which is not a really good strategy but it's really good when it comes to the to all the, right um, we got t- we got tire coming out come on oh huh? able to get um oh didn't even get a character just it, got a mortality field yeah it did Unfortunate. I thought it was going to be really good. Oh, it was looking like it was going to be, but they had the sense to scatter before. Yeah. 
I think what happened is when you saw the tire bounce off of that rock, it was Lucio. I think because it had that delay, they were able to move out of the way. Lucio actually booped it off of away from himself when. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. I thought he. I thought like the side of his tire hit the rock. Yeah, it looked like it, but it was really close. Well, credit to their Lucio for having the presence of mind for being able to do that. Oh yeah. Our own Lucio is kind of going crazy as it, as well. Yep. He's getting kind of pushed into a corner, which I don't really see often with, with our Lucio. Right. He likes keeping a, uh, a more aggressive play style, if you will. Yeah, likes to be in the middle of the fray. Not only that, but he likes just being the annoyance. I, I, I've actually heard him say that. He likes being the, the, the bee. Oh, yeah. Tom does love being annoying. It's something he really enjoys. <laughs> He's gonna watch the stream and hear that. Oh, I hope he does. <laughs> That'll be a fun little nugget for the Overwatch team when they're doing film review <laughs> next week. Ian does go down. Alright, can Lucio keep it up here? I think Lucio's almost got his ult. Gotta be close. Oh, unfortunate. There, the entire team does go down. Wow. It's gonna be a struggle to get back to the point in time for the last little encounter, but yeah, they've it's gonna come down to the wire, I think. I think so. I think you're going to have to pick a quick character. Oh, and it looks like they go with uh, Sojourn, probably specifically for that. Yeah. Also, Sojourn is really good for just keeping the uh, the point kind of unoccupied, mm -hmm. except for by her at least. Uh, and Still not able to make it. Oh, and the May Wall at the tail end. That's probably yeah. what. I don't know that she would have made it either way, but the May Wall definitely kept her out. Yeah. That is unfortunate. I, is this what I think it is? Uh, is this where he blocks, the, he blocks the tire? Oh, that was it. That is crazy that he was able to get that out fast enough to actually... If, we, if he had not done it that fast, we would have taken point right there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so that's going to be it. Unfortunately, a tough loss for the Eagles. Lenore Ryan is able to take it 3 nothing. But, you know, that's one of the things about having these multi-set uh, games is that sometimes you look at the score and you're like, oh, 3 nothing. they got shut out. If you watch the game, that is not the story that game told. Not only did they win multiple uh, sets within those rounds, but were had very, very close gameplay. I think that uh, they didn't do as well on Flashpoint, but I mean, especially on the payload push. And that was I thought they were gonna take that for sure. I'm I'm really I was really kind of stunned that we lost that one because they did so well on that payload round. Uh, but anyway, that's how it goes. Sometimes we'll have to drop back and pun and bring it back next week. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick two minute break and we'll be back in just a minute, and we will have the post game show when we come back. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. And it takes software developers to make those things work. I will church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us.
All right, and welcome back, everybody. We're here for the Faulkner post game for this Overwatch 2 match against Lenore Ryan. Unfortunately, the Eagles not able to secure a victory tonight. They fall with a score of 3-0 to zero to the Bears. But we are here with good old Tom. Tom, as he's known in some circles. So we're going to go ahead and talk to him for a second about some of the things that happened in this game. Tom, it seemed like you guys were doing really, really well in the early game and the late game, but it seemed like it was the middle of the game that you guys tended to have a little bit of struggle with. So was there a reason for that? Were there issues that the other team was causing? What was going on there? Uh, Well, buddies on the other team figured out something that worked. We did not know what to do against that. Got to be honest. We haven't practiced against that. That comp, team comp, mm -hmm. we're not ready for it. Um. We're going to be practicing some more, I bet. Yeah, so to this be honest. Is, this is definitely one that you guys are going to be going over several times in the review room. Um, one of the things that I noticed, too, you guys had a fantastic second round with that cargo push and just came within an eyelash of winning it, uh, really came together to win the first one and then uh, just barely lost the last one with only about a minute left to go. So it seems like that was a, a game that y'all did really well. What were the, the keys to the success there, and, and what were the things that ultimately you just came up a little bit short on? Uh, let's see. Uh, which one was that? The the cargo. Uh, yeah. The payload trying to load. think what we were doing. Hmm. So one of the things, uh, for example, you had the uh, Sombra push by Ian oh, yep. flanking That's in that right. one a lot. Um, that was one of the ones that I noticed. Yeah, I got to be honest, overall, and just through all the matches, you know, every once in a while, we would have maybe one of us figuring out uh, a little bit of something that worked. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's just one person. And, uh, you know, their team adapted very quickly to, uh, you know, anything that we found that would work. Every once in a while, we got a little something going on, you know, but we just couldn't find anything that stuck. I do know. I do remember you had a couple of excellent plays with Lucio, especially using some strategic use of the ult there to clear off point. Uh, what was was that something that just kind of happened in the heat of the moment, or was that something that y'all had planned for and were holding back on? Uh, no, it's. I mean, you know, I try to save it for. Uh, you know, ideally, there's two reasons that you would use the Lucio ult: is uh, you know, preventing something you know, like an enemy ult or something like that, right. or uh, just to rush point to get an entry ult. Um, and, you know, I got to be honest, I can't can't be too proud about today. Uh, definitely didn't do as good as I could have. Definitely going to be practicing. Um, I say above all, we actually didn't do terrible. We really didn't. Oh, no, by no means. Um, but just stuff we overlooked in practice, that's all it is that we got to work on. All right, well, you know, that's the right attitude to have. You see some problems, and you just start looking for ways that you can rectify it in the weeks to come. So we'll certainly be looking forward to the next game uh, whenever that happens, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you guys are able to do in the meantime, how that's going to manifest itself in the game. So thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Absolutely. So that is good old Tom, uh, Tom Ledwell, who was our guest of honor tonight in the hot chair <laughs> doing the smolder. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call it a night uh, there. Just let you know the next broadcast we have coming up is Smash Bros. The blue team is going to be playing on Thursday. That is the 28th, uh, and that's going to be at 6 p.m. against Benedictine University. So it'll be the Eagles versus the Eagles. Uh, and then for CSGO, we have that game on Friday night, our first CSGO game of the season, the 29th. That's also going to be at 6, and that's going to be against Purdue University. So. Uh, Eagles versus Trains. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, the Boilermakers are going to be playing us on Friday. So lots of interesting stuff happening this week. And, of course, we'll have our next Overwatch game at this time on Tuesday of next week. So we'll be looking forward to seeing what adjustments they made in the meantime. So special thanks to my production crew. And there were several of them here tonight. So DeAndre White on production. We also had Sniper Mike, another member of the Overwatch team, Michael Johnston, he was working the spectator mode for Overwatch, and then we had Liz Anderson as production manager. Thank you so much for all of their hard work, keeping us on the air and making us look good. And, of course, my broadcast partner, uh, Josh Chauchi, or Moniker, as you may know him. He was doing an excellent job providing color commentary. 
Uh, as for me, I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt. Thanks so much for being with us this evening, and we will see you soon. Again, the next broadcast is going to be Thursday night at 6 p.m., so be sure to be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events.